Hello, my name is Stephanie Wood Garnett, and I am the director of the Center for Comprehensive School Reform and Improvement at Learning Point Associates here in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the Center's webcast on the teaching of fractions, a follow-up to our webcast on algebra. Just a quick note to let you know that the Center is funded by the U.S. Department of Education. As a federally funded clearinghouse, the Center for Comprehensive School Reform and Improvement provides materials and services at no charge. We produce webcasts like today's, publish newsletters, research briefs, and issue briefs, maintain a research database of over 5,000 publications, and provide technical assistance. Today, we are very happy to contribute to the conversation on the teaching of fractions, a topic that, as many of you know, comes directly from the report of the National Mathematics Advisory Panel. Thank you for your interest and for joining us, and we hope that you will visit our website to learn more about the Center and its resources. Now, here is the webcast moderator and my colleague at the Center, Abner Oaks. Thank you, Stephanie, and good afternoon to all of you out there in school buildings and district offices and university settings and even in front of your computer at home. Once again, this math-related webcast has attracted a broad audience that stretches from San Francisco and New Orleans to Orlando and my friends in Catoosa, Oklahoma. My name is Abner Oaks, and I am a senior program associate with the Center. I'll be your host today. I'm very glad that you have joined us for this next hour as we explore a topic that seems to be of great interest to many of you, the teaching of fractions. We look forward to your participation during this webcast, especially via a box on the webcast launch page where you can ask questions. We will go to those questions from time to time to answer what's on your mind, but please know that we will not be able to get to every one. In fact, we, rec we received over 200 questions before this webcast even got started when you registered. There are also polling questions on the side of your screen and we encourage you to take time today to complete them. We will report on the results as the webcast goes on. I must also say that today's presentation is provided as a resource that we hope all educators will find useful. However, the Center for Comprehensive School Reform and Improvement and the U.S. Department of Education do not endorse or recommend any particular publication, assessment tool, measure, rating scale, author, publisher, or supplier that might be mentioned. Well, I think that takes care of all of our housekeeping items, so let's meet our guests. First, we have Dr. Francis Skip Fennell, currently professor of education at McDaniel College past president of the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics and former member of the National Mathematics Advisory Panel. Skip was on the writing team of the NCTM's Principles and Standards for School Mathematics and the Curriculum Focal Points. And with Skip, we have two educators from Montgomery County Public Schools, a district just outside of the District of Columbia and the 16th largest in the U.S. Bertram Jennerlet is the principal of Piney Branch Elementary School in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and with Bertram is Karen Roberts, the acting supervisor for pre-K-12 mathematics in Montgomery County. Now, I'd also like to mention three contributors to this webcast who are not on set today. You will get a chance to meet them through our pre-taped segments. Two of them reside in the state of Georgia. Dr. Denise Mewborn, a former elementary school teacher, and currently a professor of mathematics education and head of the Department of Mathematics and Science Education at the University of Georgia. She teaches mathematics methods classes for pre-service and in-service elementary school teachers and graduate courses on teaching, learning, and teacher education. And we have Patty Huberty, a colleague of Denise's at the university and a mathematics teacher and coach at Colbert Elementary School in Colbert, Georgia. Patty let us observe and videotape two of her classes as she worked with a group of fifth graders on fractions. And lastly, we'll meet Dr. Hung Si Wu, a professor of mathematics at the University of California at Berkeley, and like Skip, a former member of the National Mathematics Advisory Panel. Wu 
has authored research papers and research monograms, monographs, as well as three graduate level textbooks in mathematics in Chinese. Since 1996, Wu has committed significant time to the area of mathematics education, and his latest project is the improvement of the professional development of teachers. Okay, enough talk. Let's go to our first pre-tape segment, when we traveled this summer to Berkeley, California, to watch Wu work with a group of elementary school teachers at what is called the Wu Institute. Welcome to the Wu Institute a three-week-long professional development program for elementary school teachers that takes place each summer at Berkeley's Mathematical Sciences Research Institute. Here, mathematics professor Hung Si Wu has an ambitious goal for these teachers. I want to change the way you think about mathematics, and I want to change the way you teach mathematics. Wu, a member of the National Mathematics Advisory Panel, has written and talked extensively about how teachers teach fractions to elementary school students. According to Wu, educators too quickly slide into concrete analogies to introduce the idea of a fraction. The learning of fractions is the inaugural phase of a child's introduction to abstract mathematics. And there's no two way around it. That's exactly what it is. And it has to be that way because after this, the next elevation of the level of abstractions is the teaching of algebra. We all know what a fraction is, the way it's taught in schools. It's a piece of pizza, a piece of a pie. That's a metaphoric representation of a fraction. It's not a fraction. A fraction is a number. A number clearly is not a piece of pizza. So you want people to understand fractions as a number by showing them a piece of pizza, and that's what I call metaphoric teaching. Here's the metaphor, all right? You figure out the rest yourself. So I give you a piece of pizza, all right? You're supposed to understand what it means to multiply uh, 12 over 5 uh, uh, times um, uh, uh, 3 over 4. Well, how do you do that? Well, you just told me a fraction is a piece of pizza. How do you multiply two pieces of pizza? So it's this kind of problem that plagues the teaching of fractions at all levels. At this summer's institute, Wu examined some of the pitfalls of the more traditional food analogy for fractions. So I say I give away two-thirds of the ham to my, uh, my in-laws. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Let's say it's a rectangular ham. <laughs> you could then chop visually measure it and chop two-thirds, but if the ham is lumpy in one part and <laughs> skimpy in another, then are you talking two-thirds of the geometry of the ham, or are you talking two-thirds of the weight of the ham? Uh, the ham usually looks like this, right? <laughs> I might have meant two-thirds in length. If a child gets to saying equal parts, then everything is just equal parts, and then comes the ham, again, he says equal parts. That's dangerous. The ham situation is the first indication that it's not a matter of whether I like it or you like it, but you want to make sense, you have to be precise. You have to be precise. Clearly, the unit of measurement, length or weight, matters when talking about a ham. And Wu contends that problems with precision are widespread. And everybody drowns in this atmosphere because fraction is too hard. It's too abstract for you without firm guidance, without precise guidance, for you to say, I can figure out what to do in fraction just by a little analogy here and there, a little metaphor here and there to help me out. No, it doesn't work. 